Hey guys, what's up? Sorry for the bad lighting today. We've got a really weird sort of weather out here. It's summertime, really hot, but really rainy and nasty at the same time. Anyway, this is Osuroshi Saturday, the show that talks about everything dark, scary, mythological, real, fake, urban legend, creepy pasta tales from Asia. And that's all over Asia. It doesn't just include Japan, but it's mostly Japan. Today we're back into stories, true stories, as true as they can be, as true as you want to believe they are. Um, and starting with our first one, it's, um, well, true in the sense that I have the fact of actual news footage and news reports of it actually happening, and that's what I'll probably post it maybe while I'm talking about this story. And this is something that happened in a rural town here in Japan. I don't remember the name offhand. I'm sure this, the report that I show will have it, so me saying it will just be it being reiterated once more. Nonetheless, the story uh, talks about a high school, and at this high school, it was just your normal everyday public high school in Japan, um, and they were going on a mountain trip to a nearby mountain. This is kind of the same as just like taking your kids on a nature walk. It's pretty often. Um, usually what they'll do is they'll attach some sort of science project around it. Maybe the kids will go look for something in nature science in some sort of uh, bug collecting. Sometimes they do. They look for uh, many of the beautiful beetles that Japan has. I know a lot of uh, the elementary school kids, that's definitely what their trips around is taking these little like beetle holders um, and going out there and capturing a few really beautiful gigantic beetles. Um, I don't know exactly what their reason was for going to the mountain, but let's just say it was like a nature walk. Uh, it was a school class trip, an excursion, a field trip, whatever you want to call it. And while they were out there at this mountain, one of the girls in the class that had gone out there reported feeling sick. Um, but she wasn't saying that she was sick in a way of like vomiting or throwing up or fever or anything. Um, she said she felt like she couldn't control her body. Uh, and then suddenly they said like she started like flailing around and like moving all crazy and screaming and like spinning around in circles and stuff and totally acting not like herself. Um, I believe like the way the, the kanji was translated was like outside of what was her own personality. And um, then she finally collapsed, she fainted. Like I guess whatever this sickness or disease or something, maybe a mountain spirit that possessed her, just whipped her body around, made her do all this crazy stuff. Um, and er everyone was super freaked out. They called an ambulance to come all the way out there, um, took her to the hospital. Uh, she went there, she stayed there for a day or two. Um, and you know, the schools kind of worked up. They were kind of freaked out for a couple days. Um, you know, some of her friends went and checked on her, saw that she was okay. She seemed to have gotten much better. Um, it seemed like whatever was out there didn't really affect her once she got to the hospital, and she seemed to have gotten better, which was great. Um, and they pretty much believed that the whole episode was over, that whatever had affected her out at that place, which when they brought her to the medical um, institute, obviously the hospital, they said they couldn't figure anything out. Like she didn't test for any kind of sickness or disease or ailment or psychological, uh, psychiatric or anything like that. Um, they said it must have just been like, I don't know, some kind of reaction to something, maybe an allergy to something that they didn't quite understand. Or um, they brought her to a temple and the monk said, yeah, she was taken over by like some sort of mountain spirit or maybe somebody who died out in the rice fields out there. Um, but what it was, we don't know. They gave her a blessing, a talisman, and sent her on her way. She got back to school after two days, and things were calm until suddenly in the middle of class, she started to feel the same way again. She started to feel faint, and then she started to move around like really weird. Um, how to describe what I saw this video, um, and if I find it again, um, I actually, you know what, I have the video on a really old J pasta so if I can't find it online I'll just put it through there um, and the girl is affected in a way in which she's like seems like she's weeping and moving back and forth and like upset and crying over something that is in the room with her and apparently when she started to do this another girl next to her started to feel the same ailment she started to feel faint she started to feel like something was heavy and pressing her down to the ground. 
She started to wail and cry out and fainted. And then it spread to the whole class. And every girl, only the girls, not none of the guys, I don't know why they weren't affected, but they all started to go into this like mass hysteria. Um, and it went even outside of the classroom, went into the hallway and continued all the way down into the stairwell. And you actually see like even into a stairwell next to the classroom, these girls fainting and falling over and moving all weird and weeping. And uh, they eventually had to get like a bunch of medical staff out there and take all these kids to the hospital. And again, nothing was ever found as to what was wrong with this 100% happen. Um, this is documented. This is a news report and video and pictures and everything of it. So that makes it super, super creepy to me. Um, the fact that it was actually caught on video. There's even a news report on it um, in which they like detailed out in the small animation of like all the different effects that this weird sort of spirit ghost type ailment had on them. Very interesting. Next one uh, is still within Asia. We're still in the eastern part of the world. It's from India actually. I had a friend who went to college out in India and had a roommate while she was out there and she said during the time that she was with this roommate, um, as the year began, she said her roommate was totally cool, nice person, easy to get along with. Um, but then later, she started to kind of see like uh, a crumbling in her semblance, like she started to really see her fall apart mentally. And she didn't know if it was like the stress of being away from home or if she had had previous psychological problems or what the situation is but this girl just was starting to snap slowly by slowly she was constantly talking about religious stuff it was a mix between Christianity and Hindu stuff she said all the time like her ideas were constantly being like proselytized to her and that she constantly spoke of demons and angels and she said that demons were coming to attack the earth soon and she said like she didn't know what to do she'd tell like her counselor at school and the counselor didn't do anything she said at one point she even thought about calling the police, but she didn't want her friend to have like a police record. She didn't know how the police, the whole police thing worked in India, what would happen to her roommate. And she didn't want to obviously like narc her out or anything like that. But at the same time, she worried about her safety. Uh, she said when it got the most troubling is when um, they, that she started to say that she knew demons were coming down to earth to destroy the world. And that she said the only way that we can stop it is by making angels and like she grabbed my friend's wrist and was like we need to make angels and she was just like holy shit what the fuck like she was freaking out she said that was it she like packed all her stuff that night she got out of there it was the dorms she called uh all the different people connected to with you know the ta working the floor the uh, the dorm manager, her counselor, she said, look, I don't care what you want to do, but I'm not living there anymore with her. And they're like, look, we understand. You've kind of, you know, you've made enough reports. We'll go ahead and like, you know, cut you off from having to have a lease of the dorms and you can go get another place. We'll just get her another roommate. Um, and so later the next year, uh, she's still going to the same college. And one day she's at a party and they're all talking at the party. They're like, man, have you ever had a crazy roommate in, in college yet? And everyone's like, yeah, man, I got some crazy stories. And like, so everyone started telling their stories and stuff. She said it was like a group of 12 or 15 people and they're just exchanging their stories about like pranks that roommates had pulled on them or how they had shown up drunk or wasted or passed out on the floor. Um, and one girl in the group was like, oh man, no, you guys, I've got the craziest story. She's like, I used to be in dorm, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, Right away, she's like, oh my God, that's my dorm. And she's like, hey, I was in the same dorm. Did you have blah, blah, blah as a roommate? And she was like, oh my God, yeah. And everyone got silent at the party because both of them were like, oh my God, this girl had the same roommate as me and she's the one who took over my lease at the, con uh, the dorm when I left. And so, you know, they both kind of had a connection like that. She's like, yeah, that girl, do you know what she did? And so everyone got real quiet and she's like, no, no, like, what did she do? Cause I moved out, you know, she was too crazy. She kept talking to me about angels. She's like, yeah, exactly, angels. Well, one day I came home and that girl was super excited. The crazy roommate was super excited. She's like, you gotta see, I made an angel. I finally made an angel for real. Like I made one, I finally got one. And uh, she's like, oh, what the hell are you talking about? Like she said, she pretty much had just like, when she would come home, she would go to the living room go to the bedroom that was connected to it and just stay in there and like never talk to her. So today she had finally just like waited in the living room for her to come home so that she could show her whatever crazy angel she had made. 
and she figured like maybe it's a drawing an art project or something crazy like that she said no it was like horrific like she's like she took her by the wrist like the other room and she said here come into my room and I'll show you the angel I made and she said like on her bed she had like n taken all the sheets and covers off and like spread it out like a giant gurney pretty much and gone around town mutilating different animals and taken all this group of animal body parts dumped it out on her bed and then used like sewing needle like uh, you would like to sew skin back together and sewn together like this just horrific grotesque amalgamation of all the different like you know stray cats stray dogs and like India's got a lot of like stray animals running around and stuff and uh, she said she had just brought these animals back cut them up and like sewn them back together into like all some sort of weird beast of like she said there was like multiple eyes in it multiple arms and legs and like feet sticking out at all weird angles and like two mouths and as she said it was just this horrific thing she just scream call the police and of course when the police showed up they were like yeah I guess we gotta arrest this person <laughs> yeah so that's that's the angel maker maker story all right last one is called the weeping cave um, this was a really interesting story for me um, because I'd heard a story similar to this in the past and it was a creepypasta called The Turning Boy. So if you like this story, maybe you want to look up the creepypasta called The Turning Boy. Um, this one is similar in the sense that um, these group of friends were really into spelunking. If you don't know what spelunking is, it's going into caves and rooting around in caves, uh, checking them all out, going into different places. Um, not as like hardcore as like a movie like The Descent, they're not dropping down all kinds of weird little caverns and holes and stuff like that. Uh, but they would just pretty much go into these caves, check them out. Um, and uh, they were a group of about, I think like five friends it was, yeah, five friends. Um, and these were, some were Gaijin, some were Japanese, and this is in Japan by the way, again in the countryside of Japan. Um, caving is a thing you can have a caving group and of course they wore all the, the practical equipment you've got those you know lights that you put on your head they had the Gore-Tex um, you know get up with keeping themselves dry and warm so that they could go deep into these caves and everything and they got into one and every time they would go into a cave what they would do is bring like pretty much the equivalent to a construction light so they could really light it up and take a cool picture of their group in the cave they had gone to and then they would save it for their big group video album at the end of the year which was like a video spliced together that edited all the different caves that they had visited that year and so they were going to the last cave of the year and each one of them would always bring like kind of their own video camera or like maybe they just use their phone they had enough light because they had that big construction light that they would bring in there to light up the whole cave and so they're all taking their videos and everything and then finally they set up for the group video where they're all together standing together and they say a little bit of something about how the cave was to go with um, and they're a group like I said of mixed I think it was like two gaijin and three Japanese um, and they get in there they they take their video and everything and they leave and um, they get back and the group leader called each of them up and was like hey when we went like did you guys know anyone else going along on the trip with us? Like, there was just five, right? And they're like, yeah, why? What's, what's up? What's up? Already they're creeped out because there's like, oh, some like ghost followed us into the cave or something. And he's like, no, no, it's nothing like that. It's nothing like that. He's just like, okay, so I want you to take a look at this video when you guys come over today when we have our meeting about the next cave we're going to go to. So they come on over. Uh, and he said, oh, also, yeah, I forgot this. He, he said, bring all your cameras that you took video with of this because I want to look at what footage you got just to see if it matches up to mine. And that made sense because obviously sometimes he would edit in other shots that were just different angles of the same video. And they figured that's what it was. That's why they're bringing their video over. So they checked it out. And when they watched his video, they saw like this uh, shape of like, uh, like you would see like an old hunched over lady like in a kimono, so like you can tell it's a kimono because pretty much it makes your body shapeless. Um, an old lady in Japan, usually um, post or pre-World War II, you know they're old because they actually like almost always end up hunching over. They didn't have enough food and stuff back then. They 
literally were dying from malnutrition during and after the war. So a lot of people later in life, their bones decalcified and they have really bad hunchbacks. If you come to Japan and you look at old people that are like post-World War II survivors, uh, even if they were children back then, they're totally hunched over because of malnutrition. Sad, but true. Um, anyway, they said that's how they could tell it was like the shape of an old woman. And she kind of had like a you know, long hair shadow type look. But they said most it was just a silhouette. You couldn't really make out like a lot of facial features and stuff like that. And they said she was like hunched over like this. and uh, But she wasn't really moving much. So uh, they were like, wow, that's, that is super creepy. Um, at least it's just a weird shadow. Maybe it's just like a stalactite or a stalagmite in a certain shadow because when we put this big construction light in there, we cast a ton of light in there and make these crazy shadows on the walls. That's probably what it is. And he said, exactly, that's what I think. That's what it probably is. So give me your video so I can just match it up and figure that out. And they said when he got all the different videos and tried to match it up, like each one a little bit longer uh, recording of the area that they were in, he said that like, you could actually see the movement of the shadow and it became more human as you watched each video in procession because it wasn't moving quick enough that if you just kept staring at it, it was moving. It was like if you saw a human moving in slow motion, it had been recorded in slow motion. Um, and they said it was like in this kind of slow bob, like it had been weeping, like it's bent over and like, uh, huh, 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 huh. Uh, huh, 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 huh. I'm like, whoa, that is so creepy. So they looked into the cave a little bit more. They researched it a little bit more. Pretty much when they would go in and look up these caves, pretty much all they would look up is like the topography of the area around it, if it was like safe to go into, if other people had been there. Well, what they found out is that the cave was what you call a death cave. Um, a long time ago in Japan, when people would get really old in a village, and I mean, this is a long, long time ago. We're not, we're not talking about... Um, you know, anytime recently in Japan, um, when people would be really old in a village uh, and they didn't have really good medical care or anything back then, and they became kind of a burden on the village, um, some villages would just walk them out to a cave and let them die in the cave. Uh, or sometimes the person themselves would choose to go out to that cave and die in the cave. And those caves were then called death caves, and they were used for that all the time. And that's what this one had been. It had been a death cave. So possibly... Uh, an elderly person being left in a death cave to die. Guys, that's Osodoshi Saturday. I hope you enjoyed the tales you heard here today. If you have your own spooky tales from Japan, don't be afraid to send them to me. I would love to read them. I've got a couple that have just come in recently. I'm saving them up for the next Osodoshi Saturday. If you like what you saw here today, please like, comment, and subscribe, and share this video. That's how I know people want to see more of it. Until next time, I'm Unrested. This is Osodoshi Saturday.